Hey everyone, I am Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're talking about AMD's R9 Fury X and specifically we're talking about the pump wine issue. This was originally discussed about a week ago and it's been discussed throughout the last week all the way up through the last few days and it's only gotten louder in terms of the online discussion surrounding the pump wine. So just to bring everyone up to speed, this is the R9 Fury X. This is AMD's new flagship. Its cooling solution is all liquid. There is no, other than the fan on the radiator, there is no air involved on the card itself. So to this end, it is a little bit different than the 980 Ti Hybrid that we looked at recently, which uses a VRM and VRAM cooling solution on the video card, sort of all the way to the side, and then it uses liquid on the GPU itself. This is different from that, and that is why it's called the Hybrid. This card uses a pump located centrally on the GPU, a radiator with an expanded liquid chamber for longevity, basically more liquid, and then a fan on the radiator. And the wine issue that has been discussed is not coil wine. This is very traditional of video cards to have coil wine, which is normally related to activity. As your frame rate increases, as the effort of the video card increases, things like that, there will be a wine emitted from coils in the card, electrical components. In this case, it's pump wine, which is emitted from the high-speed pump, which circulates liquid through the loop. So that's what we're looking at today, and specifically what we're looking at is, one, does it exist in retail cards, which is what we have, and two, is it actually an issue to the end user? Is this only something you hear in an open bench? So let's go over the testing methodology briefly. It's all defined in the article linked in the description below if you have not discovered that yet, and then we'll get into the actual results with frequency testing and, and spectrum analysis. The methodology here is pretty important. AMD wants its tubes to be located in a certain position. It wants the radiator to be in a certain position. This is all in the Fury X manual. So the manual states that the radiator should be higher than the video card and that the tubes should be lower on the radiator install. So it doesn't have to work as hard as is what my guess would be. And also to probably reduce some noise. So we installed it that way per spec of AMD's manual and then also we used a few different audio devices and tested from a few different angles so first of all the tripod we located it on top of the bench and positioned it 11.5 inches away from the video card at a 45 degree angle so it's effectively you know up here somewhere and the reasoning for this is if it's too close you'll hear a lot of noises that the end user will never hear and then you obviously want it to be at a distance that is more reasonable for a user so we positioned it there for accurate acoustics testing. We used a Roland R05 reporter class audio recorder for decibel and frequency analysis, and then used an MKE 600 Sennheiser mic, which is also mounted to this camera, and used the camera, pointed it at the video card from a different direction. So this was directional testing that we performed to see, is it really louder from one direction or the other? Finally, I had a third microphone that I positioned sort of uh, around the RAM, so sitting and connected to the memory heat sinks because this is really not a, a concern to position something there. So we had one there to be basically 1.75 inches away from the back of the video card and see what can we really hear when we're that close. As a user, you'll never be that close. So it's not data that is representative. It is, it is not an actionable data set, but it's interesting and fun to test. So the, the mic we're interested in and looking at today is the Roland, which was positioned 11.5 inches away from this device. All the other methodology is in the article. And what we found between the 980 Ti reference, the 980 Ti hybrid, which is the EVGA card that uses an Ace Attack CLC, and the Fury X, I have two Fury Xs, which use a Cooler Master CLC. And what we found, as you see in these charts, is that there is, in fact, a very high frequency produced. And this is something that we can test in observation, effectively clinically, as well as in objective analysis. So there is a higher frequency produced by the Fury X, at least card number one, than by the hybrid and 980 Ti reference, for instance. But it's not inherently louder. They are effectively the same volume level. In fact, the decibel level slightly favors the Fury X. It's, it's extremely small in favor of the Fury X over the 980 Ti hybrid. This is really just because the 980 Ti Hybrid has a, a VRM and VRAM fan on it, and this does not do that. It cools its devices with liquid instead. So that's where the noise differential is. 
but the frequency, we sit in the 20 to 22 kilohertz range for this Fury X, which is a very high frequency that actually begins to exit the frequency range of a lot of headphones. And that's, that's why you get that irritating whine. So even though it's not louder, it is more irritating as a user. But this is in an open bench we're talking about, and we'll discuss how it performs in an actual enclosure momentarily. Here's an audio recording of the Fury X and the 980Ti hybrid for your reference. Please note that your own audio setup will greatly impact how these sound. So what you hear may not be necessarily what we're hearing in the real world, but it will at least give you some comparative items to analyze from the two different video cards. So there is definitely a high frequency output of that, we are certain, but it is of a lower decibel level and is questionable once you get it in an enclosure. The 980Ti Hybrid has fewer spikes. If you look at the two graphs of the cards, you'll see that both Fury X's, even though their frequency range is slightly different, both of them have very spiky crests of this, it's, it's not really a wave, it's a spectrum analysis, but it has peaky crests and that means that those are the points at which the wine becomes more audible. And the 980Ti is a bit smoother in that regard, but it, it still outputs a hum. It definitely outputs an audible hum, but it's of a lower frequency, so it's less irritating. And this is somewhat subjective, but for, I would imagine, most users, myself included, it is certainly less irritating to have a lower hum because that is more in line with the hum of most system components like other fans so you, you can't audibly tell it apart as well from the other fans on the system let's talk about the real world use case in our test bench it's open air it's exposed and it's probably about two feet away from my ear so it is definitely audible and in the test bench we also disabled all other fans other than essential fans so the frequency was more was much easier to pick up basically by the instruments in an enclosure, we tested in an H440, an NZXT case, and a Rosewell Throne, which is a much larger case. And I was positioned about three feet away from the case, from head to ground where the case was, and I could not hear the whining. Yes, it is present. It is absolutely present in an open-air bench. If you're using an Antec skeleton or an open case, you should probably consider the whine, but if you are a user who's building in an enclosure, which is probably most people, and this is the one thing keeping you from buying the card, the audio concern, then I would say this is this is of no consequence and that you would be fine purchasing the card, assuming you already have your heart set on it for various other reasons. Just to clarify a few important details about our tests, the cards we have are both retail models, so they are what you would be buying as an end user. AMD has stated that they are aware of the issue. They indicate that it is a pump issue for sure. There is certainty in that statement. And they've also indicated that they are seeking to resolve this issue in the immediate future. They did technically say that the issue is resolved for retail cards. These are retail cards, we still hear it. So that will probably happen in the next batch or the batch after that, but that's, that's what we've been told. And then the other important item here is that we didn't detect the noise really at an audible level, even on the open air bench when we were just idling. So it kind of exists, but really to no substantial level. In our testing, we noticed that the whining was more prevalent on the open air bench when playing games. So basically when the card was placed under heavy load. When we loaded the card with Far Cry 4, with GTA, with 3D Mark Ultra, the whine became more audible and it was still inaudible in a case but this is an important differentiation to make. When we were idling, it was effectively inaudible even in open air. I wanna emphasize here that I am not saying this is a good buy or a bad buy. We're not looking at performance today, but of the audio concerns pertaining to the pump wine, that should not be a factor in your decision if you're building in an enclosure. So with that stated, when I spoke to Patrick Stone, he's our, our hardware analyst who works with me, he does a lot of the benchmarking with me, we both decided as a unit that we would really not be concerned with the frequency produced when it's in an enclosure. So that's really all we have to say about this issue. Decibel levels are effectively the same for both cards, both liquid cooled cards that we tested. The frequency is spikier on the Fury X. It's at the higher end of the spectrum, 20 kilohertz, which is quite high. 
but it's it's not audible so that is all for this video hopefully that helps some of you out and check out our patreon page if you like this type of coverage and certainly check out the article on this if you want more discussion want to learn about the test methodology how to reproduce it things like that we try to make it easy for you so thanks again links in the post roll i will see you all next time